The previous two videos were about parametric surfaces. Why did I need to talk about them? Well, I wanted to understand a problem like the rate of fluid flow through a net. The net is a surface, so I needed a description of a surface, and now I can return to that problem. Before defining the tool that measures this interaction between a field and a surface, I need one more definition. Recall for parametric curves, when I defined something that I wanted to only depend on the shape of the curve, I used the special parameterization by arc length to get something that was independent of the parameterization. I need to do something similar here. I haven't yet defined a special parameterization for the surface, but I can construct something similar, and that is the unit normal. The normal is the perpendicular direction to a surface. Its length as a vector depends on the parameterization, how fast the variables u and v are changing over the surface. However, if I divide by that length, as I can do for any vector, I get a vector of length 1, and this is the unit normal. This is what I need to find the interaction between a surface and a field. I still do actually need that special parameterization, and unlike what I did for curves, I'm not going to go into the details of how it's calculated. I'm just going to say that there is a unique parameterization, and it's written conventionally with parameters s and t, such that its normal is always of length 1. Its normal is exactly the unit normal. And this is like the parameterization for arc length, because the parameterization for arc length was the parameterization where the tangent always had length 1. And I'm going to need this for the definition in very much the same way I needed the parameterization by arc length for the definition of a line integral. So here's the definition. The interaction between a field and a parametric surface is called a flux integral. It measures how much, on average, the field passes through the surface. Positive is in the normal and the field direction. <laughs> Sorry, positive if the normal of the surface and the field direction are aligned, and negative if these are in the opposite direction. And the idea here is to take the dot product of the field with the normal just like the dot product with the tangent was used for line integrals. Both dot products do the same thing. The dot product with the tangent of a curve measured the interaction of the curve in the field, and here the dot product with the normal measures the interaction of the surface in the field. And the dot product does this because the dot product is large when vectors point in similar directions, and small when they point in near perpendicular directions. Just like the line integral, I take the dot product and then I integrate over the domain of the parametric object. So here the parametric domain is the region D and R2, so this is a double integral. The variables are S and T, those special parameters of the special parameterization. Integrating this dot product over the parameter domain captures the entire interaction between the field and the surface. The notation for a flux integral is either of these two versions, and I'll mostly use the second, which is a little bit abbreviated and thus faster to write. So now I have a definition. But it is using a special parameterization, one that I don't actually know how to calculate. It's the right definition, but like for parametric curves, it's not good for calculation. How do I actually calculate a flux integral? Well, I change back to the original variables. This is a change of variables of a two-variable integral, much like I discussed a, two, a few weeks ago. The unit normal is sigma u times sigma v divided by its length, but there also needs to be a Jacobian term, much like there was for change of variables before. I won't go into the reason why, but the Jacobian here is just the length of the tangent, and this is extremely convenient since these lengths cancel and the flux integral is just the integral in u and v over the parameter domain of the dot product of the field evaluated on the surface with the normal of the surface. This is something I can actually calculate. So if this final version is so nice, why did I go through all the bother, bother of talking about the special parameterization and the unit normal? Well, it's not for calculation. I'm going to use this latter version for calculation but it's for independence of parameterization. If I want the flux of a field over, say, a cylinder, I want to know that I can parameterize the cylinder however I want, that the result of the interaction doesn't depend on the parameterization, 
And this has been a theme so far with parametric curves, and it's the same here. All throughout mathematics with parametric objects, defining something about the objects always raises the question of dependence on the parameterization. To define something definitively, I need independence from the choice of parameterization. And I have that here, which means I am free to use whichever parameterization suits me. And this is absolutely necessary, so it explains the detour, detour through a pretty complicated definition, even though that definition isn't part of the calculation of these flux integrals.